Okay, this video is about memorizing certain polyatomic ions. This is the table, and again, remember this is a subset of all the polyatomic ions out there. This is by no means um, includes every polyatomic ion, but these are common ones that you'll see throughout the course, and so they're ones that we're asking you to learn. So the ones that I've put the red dot beside, so you'll notice here, nitrite, nitrate, all of these here, as well as carbonate, sulfite, sulfate, phosphite, and phosphate, all of those can be learned by this Nick the Camel trick, which I'll show you uh, soon. The ones that are underlined in green are basically the remaining ones that aren't a red dot. Those five are going to need to be learned on their own, and you probably already know at least the hydroxide right now. Uh, the ones that I haven't put any indication beside, these are the combination of hydrogen ion with Nick the Camel ions, and we build then these um, other polyatomic ions. And so there's a number of these here to know. So I'll show you how those go together at the end. All right, so let's look at the Nick the Camel ions to start. So I've set up this somewhat of a table here with this sentence, Nick the Camel had a clam for supper in Phoenix. So the trick here is that the number of consonants in the word is going to tell us the number of oxygen atoms in the ion, and the number of vowels is going to tell us the negative charge. So one vowel, negative one charge, two vowels, negative two charge, and so on. Now there's four rows to this table. The first will be the per eight, the second is the eight row, then eight and hypoite. So Nick the camel tells us the eight row. So this is the row that we need to fill in first. So from Nick the camel, we get the eights. So how do we do this? Well, we start with the first letter of the word. So capital N for nitrogen coming from Nick. Now the number of consonants in Nick will tell us the number of oxygens. So remember your vowels are A, E, I, O and U, sometimes Y, but Y is not showing up here. So we're looking for letters other than A, E, I, O, and U, or U. And so we have the N, the C, and the K. There's three consonants, therefore three oxygens in nitrate. Now the charge, that'll be come from the number of vowels. So you'll notice that there's an I here, so that's one vowel, so we have a negative one charge. So nitrate is NO3 negative one. Okay, camel will give you carbonate. Take the first letter, capital C. Now how many consonants are there? One, two, three. And so we'll get CO3. How many vowels? One, two. So we'll have a two negative charge. So carbonate, CO3, two negative. Clam, had a clam. So this time we've already done carbonate with the C. So this time we'll get chlorate, so CL. Now, oxygens, again, number of consonants, one, two, three, CLO3, and vowels, there's one vowel, CLO3, negative one, chlorate. Nick the camel had a clam for supper, so we'll start with the S, and we're getting sulfate out of this. How many oxygens are there? Well, how many consonants? One, two, three, four. How many vowels? One, two. There we go, sulfate. And phoenix. Phoenix might be a little tricky to spell. This will give us phosphate. But even if you spelt it, the letters in the wrong order, I suppose as long as you got the vowels and consonants right, in the end you'd figure out the phosphate. We have the P, H, N, and X, PO4. And then we have the O, E, and I, three vowels. So there's our three negative charge. Okay, so Nick the camel gives us the eight, nitrate, carbonate, chlorate, sulfate, and phosphate. So how do we get the ites? Well, we drop an oxygen. So going from the eight to the ite, you drop one oxygen. That's the only thing that changes. So the difference between nitrate and nitrite is that the nitrite will have one less oxygen, NO2 negative. Carbonite, CO2. Two negative. That one's not even on your list, but just showing you how that works. Chlorite, 
ClO2 negative, sulfite SO3 2 negative, phosphite PO3 3 negative. How do we get the hypoite? Drop another oxygen. So hyponitrite. Well, hypochlorite. And really those are the two that, that you'll see in questions. So I'll leave those there. And the first row comes from the per eight. So from the eight, we would go up one oxygen. So per nitrate, NO4 negative. I'll jump over to chlorate and go to per chlorate. So ClO4 negative one. And really those are the ones that you're going to see, but per sulfate, SO5 two negative. Okay, um, is there anything else we can do here? Sure, these halogens that are in group 17, right? Think of the other halogens that are in group 17 and that have um, ions on our list. Well, there's bromate and iodate and all of those combinations. Once you know from clam, once you know chlorate and then you figure out the rest of them, all you need to do is replace the halogen with a different halogen. So replace the chlorine with bromine or replace it with iodine. So bromate, BrO3 negative. Notice it's exactly the same as chlorate. I just switched the halogen. Same valence electrons, same bonding pattern. Per bromate, bromite, and hypobromite. Could you do the same thing with iodine? Sure you could. Per iodate, iodate, iodite, and per iodite. So you'll see those, I'm sorry, hypo iodite. You'll see those in your list. And so moving back up to this list, we basically just covered everything in red from Nick the Camel. Here's nitrate and nitrite. Then we have all of the ones with halogens, carbonate, the sulfite and sulfate, as well as the phosphite and phosphate. So there you go. Nick the Camel just helped us out with a whole bunch there. Now, the ones that are in green. These ones really just straight up need to be memorized. Perhaps you remember ammonia as NH3. This is the ammonium ion, NH4 positive one. You might remember it also from your ionic compounds as being the one positive polyatomic ion. The hydroxide ion, very important, indicates a basic solution. It is a polyatomic ion. Remember when you use these in formulas to put brackets around them. Now that acetate could actually be written as C2H3O2 negative. If you prefer, you could do that instead of CH3COO negative. So that C2H3O2 negative, there's your acetate. And the last one there, oh sorry, not the last one, but CN negative one, there's cyanide. And maybe the C and the N help you, they're both in the name here, cyanide. Now peroxide, you can use what you know already. The oxide ion is O2 negative. And now you've learned going from eight to per eight means add an oxygen. Well, going from oxide to peroxide, add an oxygen. So there you go. There's the peroxide ion. Okay, so what's really left at this point is to then look at these ions here that involve a nick the camel ion as well as a hydrogen ion. So I'll shuffle down to the bottom here and we can look at those. So to start off with, let's look at HCO3 negative one. This is the hydrogen carbonate ion. Now any ion that has one hydrogen, so subscript of one here, one hydrogen in the formula here could be written as, you could replace the hydrogen space with bi, so bicarbonate. <clears throat> There's the bicarbonate ion. So what if you had to come up with the, the formula of the hydrogen carbonate or bicarbonate ion? Well, the hydrogen ion is H positive one, and the carbonate ion from Camel is CO3 two negative. Now, I'm not asking you to 
crisscross here. This is an ion, not a neutral compound. We're just looking to look for the net or sum of these particles. So really, we have one hydrogen, one carbon, and three oxygens, so HCO3. And the sum of the charges of these ions, positive one plus negative two, is negative one. So HCO3 negative. Let's try the hydrogen sulfite ion. So the hydrogen ion, H positive one, sulfite. Sulfate was SO4, two negative, so we'll drop an oxygen, SO3, two negative. And now we put these together, we're looking for the collection, the sum, HSO3, and in terms of charges, we have positive one plus negative two, and that will be negative one. So we have HSO3, negative one. So this is also known as the bisulfite ion. What if you have a dihydrogen? So for example, dihydrogen phosphate. Well, that's just telling us that we have two hydrogen ions, dihydrogen, so there's going to be two of those, and a phosphate. That came from Phoenix. There we go. So now the net effect here, we have two hydrogens, right? One and one, we have two there. One phosphorus, four oxygen. And now we add the charges, so positive one plus positive one plus negative three. So two minus three will be negative one. So there's our dihydrogen phosphate ion. <clears throat> so these polyatomic ions will be used in ionic compounds, right? So be prepared to put brackets around them right? And then you'll have some kind of positive ion here and you'll end up crossing charges to get the formulas of these compounds. There is no abbreviation or shortcut then for the dihydrogen ions. So it's only bicarbonate or bisulfite or bisulfate when there's just one hydrogen with it. Okay, so you can check them out in the list, but this is how you put them together. Okay, good luck with that.